Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to clean a Harman pellet stove. I have a Harman P68. And I think this should be the same for a 6143 and a, I think a P38 also. Um, and these are some of the things you're going to need to make this job a lot easier. You're going to need some paper towels, something to clean your glass off with. I think they actually make a, a glass cleaner for these pellet stoves. Or some people actually use the ashes inside their ash pan. I've never really tried that. You're going to need a putty knife, like a bigger, bigger one and a smaller one. Uh, a 6 inch extension with a 5 16 inch socket. Um, these are 3 8 inch drive. You could use a quarter inch drive if you have them. Um, I'm going to need a quarter inch socket. Now this one's going to have to be a quarter inch drive. I'll show you that later with a 4 inch extension on it. A pair of pliers, a hammer, a regular screwdriver. Um, this time I'm going to try to use a paintbrush. You could also use a, an old toothbrush if you want, but in my other video I do use a toothbrush. And a dustpan and brush. Something to cover your mouth up with. You may not see me wear this. I probably should, but it drives me nuts for the dust. Um, a pair of gloves if you want, unless you don't mind getting your hands a little dirty. And this is the t cleaning tool that came with it. We're going to use that a little bit. And a three inch flue brush to clean out the exhaust. And I only need two flexible rods. If your exhaust is longer, you may need more flexible rods. If you go up your entire chimney, you may have to clean your chimney out also. Uh, oh, a flashlight or a light like this, some WD-40, and you're going to need some kind of drill. You may be able to get away with not having this drill. You'll see what I use this for later. And a shop vac. Now this is my cleaning for the end of the season cleaning. I don't know if you can see the date on this because this is kind of the beginning of the season, but this is normally what I would do at the end of the season. But I skipped it last year. Probably shouldn't do that because my stove ended up getting a little bit of rust on it. But I built a 1,000 square foot garage and a new family room and I just didn't have time. And if you see in my other video, you won't see this wall right here. I built another bedroom on my house. So if you have any questions about that, put it in the comments. Right, I'm going to clean this glass off because it's pretty disgusting. Make sure you have some old clothes on to do this because it's a little dirty. Oh, and another thing. Make sure your stove goes through its cool down process. I just turned my heat off. Or you can turn your temperature way down so this thing doesn't turn on and let it run through the whole process of cooling down. You don't want to suck up any hot coals into your shop vac. Actually, I'm going to try to use my shop vac as least as possible because it clogs up my filter. So, you can buy a different shop vac for stoves actually, but I bought one and I didn't like it. So now I just make sure it's really cool. So as soon as I'm done cleaning this out, I'm going to go dump my shop vac and clean it out. You don't want to burn your house down. Alright, that's clean. I'm going to start cleaning my stove from the top to the bottom, inside. Put your mask on. Don't do like I'm doing. Alright, first you gotta go inside your stove and I'm gonna try to scrape out right up here. This is your heat exchanger. So use your tool that it came with and scrape that out. Do that as good as you can. Because like I said, this is my end of the season cleaning, so I'm actually going to try to clean this really well. Even though I'm just about ready to start heating. And then I'm going to scrape down my sides with my putty knives. And maybe use my brush a little bit. Okay. Normally if you unplug your stove, plug it back in, it'll turn on. And then it'll suck all the dust outside. 
At least my stove does. Take my little putty knife and just brush some of this easy stuff off my fire brick. Take my little paintbrush and brush in between them now. Ooh, that works nice. Why I never use this? There's a little lip right here. Goes up in. There's a lot of dust on that. Just take your little putty knife and scrape down your fire bricks a little bit. You want to try to keep most of this inside your stove, unless you want a really big mess. Just inspect these, make sure they're not cracked. If these are cracked, you can go pick some up at your local, probably just your local, maybe tractor supply or stove store that sells pellet stoves or fire places. Or... sides a little now. Now you could also take a brush in here and just, just dump brushes right off. I think I like the putty knife a little better. I think if you watch my other video, I think I get my cell phone in here and I show you some of this a little bit closer. Somebody put, just put on my last video. I need to change out my my seal. See how smashed that is. So I might make a video on how to change that out. All right. This is your flame guard. You can pick that right up off top of your uh, burn pot there. Scrape that off a little. Make sure that ain't broke. Yeah, I got a little rust on that. I don't like that. Make sure you just take your tool and scrape your burn pot out, guys. If 
you have any real big chunks down there and it's hard to get off with your scraper that came with the stove, just use a screwdriver, flat tip. Okay, she's looking pretty good inside. Got my burn pot cleaned out pretty good. I got the back wall cleaned out. A heat exchanger. Let's see if I can get this to kick on again. Alright, now I'm going to go to the bottom where the ash pan is at. I guess before you can do that, you can put some of the stuff back you took out. Okay, don't get too crazy cleaning this out because before I really clean that out, you got to get up under here, up under your burn pot. Just go inside your ash pan door and right, right up at the top. You got to get inside your burn pot. There's two little wing nuts. There's a wing nut here and a wing nut there. You, you may be able to take them off by hand. But that's why I got the pliers. If you, you don't have to take these all the way off. Just loosen them up a little bit. Try to show you. Take that. Take this door off. It picks up. Now I gotta clean the ashes out from inside there. Right there. That's your igniter right there at the top. You see it? Right. Oh. right there. That's your igniter. If your stove quits lighting, most likely that igniter needs replaced. They're not real cheap if you buy a Harman one. But the little bit of research I did, I think you want to buy a Harman one. So now you got that door off. Try to do this holding the phone with my other hand. Keep your finger in there. Watch for the wires from your igniter. Don't rip them out. Just brush that dust out. I'm also going to take my shop back. And I have a, a small end to put on my, my big shop back. And I'm going to stick it in that hole. Stick that in that hole. Now I can't do this. Well, maybe I can. I'll have that in that hole. And I'm going to cover up part of it with my hand. And I'm going to take my other hand and cover up the holes on top of the burn, my burn pot. Also, you want to... Yeah, see these, all these holes up here. I'm going to cover these up. You should also take like a paper clip and make sure all these holes are open. You don't want them holes clogged up. Mine look pretty good. I think I just did this the other day.
Take the little cover, clean that off a little. Brush up. Have to brush the top of that, or the bottom of your burn pot, brush it off. Just slide that back on. And them two wing nuts, just hand tighten them. Now you can continue to brush out and clean out inside where your ash pan goes. Do not stick your putty knife inside your exhaust blower. Blows all your exhaust outside, or you're going to ruin the fins on it. Shut the stove back off. Alright, stove is shut off. That's your combustion blower. Not sure what I called it earlier, but we gotta take that cover off. There's a cover over it. You might you might need to use your hammer and tap on this piece right here. Pull right off this little little round thing here goes inside of a hole over on the left side That's pretty much it try to clean that off a little That aside. Now we want to clean all the dust off of this fan. Be very careful not to bend the blades on it. I'm going to try using this paintbrush, or yeah, the paintbrush. Yeah, that works good. Use your shot back to suck that out. Oh, okay, now we got that all cleaned out. We gotta go behind the stove. We're gonna clean out. I'm gonna take, it's called the I think it's called the ESP probe. It has something to do with the, the heat going out your exhaust. And it has something to do with the safety on the stove. We're going to take that out and check it and clean it off. And just vacuum back there a little bit. And there's another little compartment back there we're going to vacuum out. Okay. It's going to be fun to do with one hand. All right, we're on the right. Well, if you're looking at your stove, I'll be on the right side. On my stove, I got all my dials and stuff here. Uh, you're gonna have three five sixteenths inch 
bolts to take out. I already have one out. You're going to have to take one out from that hole, which I already took out. And this, this one here you got to take out. And this one up here. Don't, well don't, yeah, th this one and this one, just loosen those two up. You don't have to take them out. See, that slides right off. Now it'll come off. Now you can take your shot back and see how dusty that is. Clean that out. Shot back out anything in here. But there's a little compartment right up here. You gotta take this wing nut off. I can do this with holding the phone and let me see. There we go. You don't have to take this off either. Just loosen it up and take this cover and push up on it. You gotta vacuum all that out. I do that normally at least once a month or once every ton of pellets. And the this ESP probe safety thing. You're gonna use your what is it, quarter inch socket. And that is where you can see your exhaust pipe coming out of the back. Now, if you could take your exhaust pipe off easy, you'll be able to see that probe right inside there. Now, you can maybe just clean it off that way if you want, but I can't get mine off easy. It's all, I got it all sealed up. But these little red wires right here should lead to your, your little probe. I already have it loosened up for you. That's right. Right there's the probe. Back in there. That takes that quarter inch socket. That's why you're going to need that extension. So you're going to loosen up that nut right up in there. Right in there. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. And you're going to gently pull that out. Don't, don't pull your wires out. That should come out pretty simple other than all these dang wires they put in your way. There it is. That's the probe. Now I'm going to clean that off. Mine looks like it's still in pretty good shape. I don't know, this stove's like eight years old now, nine years old. Clean that off and don't put that back in right away because we're going to clean out the exhaust. Now that won't be in our way. You got to take this out before you run a brush completely through there because you're going to hit it. So let me clean that off. All right, I cleaned that off. I just wiped mine off with a paper towel. Um, I've read also you can just use like maybe one of them green scrubby things that you use to clean your dishes with or maybe a little steel wool. You gotta clean that off. Now I'm gonna vacuum all this mess out. Okay, now we're going to go on the other side of the stove. That's why I only do some of this stuff once once a year with the end. And I'm going to take this cover off. I'll try to do this while holding a phone. I need my kids, but they're at school. This ain't gonna work. Just loosen them two. Take out this top one. So 
Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. I'm trying. You're going to want to get back here and take your shop back and try to clean out any of the dust around this fan. This fan here, this is the one that is going to turn on and blow air into the room. So you're going to want to take your paintbrush or toothbrush and try to get down in there. Now some people I think actually take that off, but I've never done that yet, so... It shouldn't be real bad. It's just dusty from your house. It's got a little bit of dust in there, but my shop vac will suck most of that out. All right, I got those fan blades all cleaned off. I found I had to get a toothbrush anyway and scrub, rub each one, something like that. It's a pain in the butt. And I tried to clean up other stuff, maybe scrape that off. I did that while my shop vac was on. Those blades don't look too bad in there. Uh, oh, here, this also, here's your, uh, or this is my fresh air intake. Yours might not be a pipe like this. Make sure that doesn't come out of there. Make sure your fresh air intake's inside there. Okay, the... This side of the stove is done. You can put this cover back on this side if you want. Um, just make sure you left your other side off because you still got to put that probe back in later. Okay, I got the side back on. Just tighten this bottom, this bottom screw up, this top screw. And this one way up top, that's the one you took out. Make sure you put that back in. They don't have to be real tight. Just snug them up. Okay, now I'm going to run my three-inch brush through the exhaust. Run it in there. Well, you may, some stoves you're going to be able to just go straight out. If you have this like in your living room, we're probably just going straight out the wall. So once you get that exhaust or that probe out of there, you could run this completely through but I got a couple two 90s on mine so I'm gonna push mine into it hits that 90 okay good enough suck some of that up Okay, I got, I got mine in. You have to kind of wiggle it a little bit, turn it a little bit. You'll get it past that 90. Okay, now we gotta go outside and run this brush the other way. Okay, now I'm outside. This is where mine comes out. I'm gonna take this this piece off here. It has a screen over it so no birds nest in there.
take your brush, clean that out a little bit. I'm going to take my drill connect it on there. This is going to help me get it past that 90. Mine goes in and then it goes straight down. I can take my drill just slowly turn it and push at the same time. It goes Take it off. I just found that makes it easier. You could probably take some WD-40 and spray some in these. Take your other rod. Screw that on there. Make sure it's screwed on all the way. You don't want to get this stuck in there. Now I can run this up and down inside. That goes all the way down to my other 90 that's close to the floor. Run that up and down a couple times. Don't pull it all the way out. Because I know right here's where my connections are. I know that that's down below this the night the first 90. Good. Now, I'm going to go inside and hook my shop back in there and blow all that dust out that I just scraped out. I'm going to let this let you see that. Okay, I'm inside. I took my hose off my shop vac. That's the port that sucks, and I'm putting it on the exhaust port. So this hose is going to blow air out. And I wrapped, and I have a small little extension on mine. And I wrapped like a towel around the end. And I'm gonna stick it up inside that hole. Somehow holding a phone in my hand. Works better with a works better with a rag. I should have got a rag. All right, it's in there. And turn this on. Maybe take your hammer. Just take the the end of it. Maybe tap on this just a little bit. Okay, well, my exhaust should be cleaned out good. I'm just going to put my cap back on. That's it out here. Okay, that's about it. I gotta put my that ESP probe back in. Um, take this out. Make, make sure you don't leave your rag inside there. Uh, 
going to put this cover back on inside there. I like to put that cover back on. First you got to slide that little tab in over there on the left and then push this piece down. I just tap it down a little bit. That way next time I got to take it off it's easier you, I mean, unless you want to put it all the way on there but I've never had no problems with it. Um, so you got that cover back on. Everything's back inside here. You got this all vacuumed out. And like I said in my other video, some of the most important places to clean would be inside your ash pan. Inside there, when I took those couple wing nuts off down there, because if not, your igniter is going to wear out a lot quicker. And a Harman igniter is not cheap. You can buy a cheap one off of Amazon, but all the research I did, they some of them only lasted a couple weeks. That igniter's been in mine for, I don't know, the entire time I've owned, owned this stove. Um, cleaned out up there. This is all clean. So Now we gotta go back. Put, put this side back in there. Make sure you put your little your little probe back in with your quarter inch socket. Just stick that in that back in that hole and snug that up. It doesn't have to be real tight. Then you're going to put your cover back on. You got to put this cover back on. These just, well, I can't put it back on, but you're going to slide it over that screw, that screw, and don't forget the other screw that goes right up here at the top. Let me do that. Okay, I got that ESP Pro back in. And don't forget to put I almost forgot to tell you, this this cover we took off, don't forget this cover we took off, right up in there. The top of it has this little hole, that's got to go over, there's a little piece, metal piece at the top that's got to slide over and it slides right down over it, and then you tighten up that wing nut. I'll try to do this holding this stone. Oh, I'm gonna make you guys dizzy. Don't get sick. I'm hoping this is helping you out. Try to hit that like button for me or the thumbs up button. It definitely takes me about three times as long to clean this. So I really hope I'm helping you. Yeah, that should be over. You can feel the top. Yeah, I, I can feel that tab I went down over. I don't know if I can show you. Not really. All right, but you can see the. You can see the hole. Right here, that that hole should be down there at the bottom. And just tighten this up, hand tight. There we go. Alright. I'll slide this cover back over. It's all cleaned up. Last thing I'm going to do is take some WD-40. This is for the end of the season. I'm going to spray it on the top and just wipe it in with a paper towel. Spray it on the sides. Wipe it in. Spray it on both sides. And I'll even get inside and spray some in the inside. It really helps keep the rust down. Um, some people like to put a night light, they'll just take an extension cord and put a night light inside and the heat from the night light, I guess, keeps some of the pieces from rusting inside. If you notice in the video, mine is starting to rust a little bit. 
I kind of neglected it. All right, another thing I got on my stove is a digital thermostat. Uh, I'm gonna try to make a little video of that so you guys would know how to wire up a digital thermostat. I have this in my basement. My digital thermostat is upstairs, so my stove runs and it keeps my upstairs at whatever temperature I put my digital thermostat at. That's, and I've been doing this for probably four or five years now with that and it works great. Also, this is my first year I'm going to try to start burning corn in this. So if you want to know a little bit about how my corn burning is going, just put it in the comments. Okay, I hope this helped you out. Please like and subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button. It really helps this video get out so other people can see it. Thank you. Have a great day.